Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. This is Kinetic Chaos Podcast number 50, the Big Five Zero. I am your host, Will, joined as always by my good friend, Wes. Right here I am. He is here. We are ready to rock and roll on episode 50. What do we think about that, Wes? It's like episode L. Super Bowl, wow. number 50, L, Roman numeral? Yeah, Come on now. L for loser. No, right? no, no, just the, the Roman numeral. Yeah, we don't we don't want that. We're not taking an L on this one. That's right. We've uh, we got a big show here because it is the 50, and we are pretty darn excited about that. We um, had a wonderful interview on Friday with Mr. Tracy Dorio and Jim Tavares with Dorio Construction. That was pretty awesome. That was it? very, very cool. Man, that was a lot of fun. We uh, released the first... KCP Business Podcast this morning, so there'll be a little bit of change on when stuff will be released now, because we're going to try to get these out probably every Monday and bump KCP Kids to another day, but I want to give them their full due on the day we release those, so not that KCP Kids isn't important, but uh, with these business guys, we, uh, we like to jump off the week with those, and we think they're going to be a good addition to the KCP universe, Definitely. so... We got some uh, good stuff coming up here. You have a, a good news st- or a good story for today. Just you already hit on it. It's the uh, the remote we did out of the Parade of Homes, interviewing Tracy and Jim, and that was just awesome. Awesome surrounds being in yes. a two million dollar house. No, two point one million. Two point one million. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. And uh, just a couple of cool guys just talking talking building industry is awesome. Talking business, talking building industry, all of those things which hit both of us. You know, I'm in real estate and you're you're interested in that kind of thing and so it was a really good fit for yeah. us. Do you want to give everyone a little bit of rundown on that house, some of the highs and lows for those that may have missed it? Well, it's uh, he talked about the, the thing that jumped out at me was the uh, all the wood construction in terms of yeah. the exposed beams. Uh, wouldn't uh, wood plank? I forget what he called it exactly. Um, a wood ceiling, basically yeah. tongue groove like wood ceiling. The remember what he said that cost of the wood was hundred grand. Uh, hundred yes. grand just on the on the wood that you see. Not talking about like the framing lumber, but the actual finished lumber, the exposed beams and the wood ceiling and the whole thing. Yeah, hundred thousand dollars just on that. And the uh, kitchen countertop was fourteen thousand dollars. Yeah, that <laughs> that kind of stuff is incredible. I mean, yeah. to see the house came in, I think it just. Uh, yeah, a few feet under 4,000 with the whole layout, I believe. I think that's right. And to see what what $2.1 million gets you is absolutely incredible. Some of the other things that you know I kind of touched on in the interview was the master suite and all the unique features with the his and her side and the um, the ag- the actually the the ability to walk right outside onto the outdoor living space which I think was probably the highlight for both you and I, yeah. I right? Two, uh, obviously just a huge outdoor living area, a um, couple of outdoor couches that were out there, the big old coffee table, and then over on one side was a fireplace with a big flat screen TV over the fireplace, and then over on the opposite side of that was a whole outdoor kitchen set up, big countertop, uh, fridge was out there, under the, under the counter fridge, a grill, a sink, a little bar with two stools. Everything that a Man. guy, a guy, well, not just a guy, a guy and a gal, a, a, it was an empty nester type home. Yeah. It wasn't particularly set up well for a family, I would say, but it was perfect for the husband and wife that are past the those times when they need to have all that empty space for, you know, kids running around and all that kind of stuff. Great entertaining setup, though, oh, with yes. the outdoor living area and the huge kitchen. You could all gather around that massive bar in the kitchen. And and the roll-up door, or not roll-up, the, the sideways opening door from the the great room, if you will, out into the outdoor yep. living space. It was like a glass wall, basically, that just uh, telescoped. Yeah, and, yeah. The, and two gigantic gas heaters yes. up above that, that door. That would provide enough heat for probably even me yeah on a yeah. on a nice brisk december day because yeah. it's the perfect type of place to take advantage of when what well, when you want to entertain or anything throughout the year and then you've got that tremendous pool with the with the, the uh, shower and all that kind of stuff out yeah. there i just i was blown away by all that and it was it was really well laid out for yeah. such a 
uh, I wouldn't say a tight space, but it wasn't an overwhelmingly large lot. Mm-hmm. But it, all of the, the land was used, I mean, incredibly well. There was no wasted space. Right. Which was, you know, you see a lot of that in, whether it's in landscape, architecture, or the layout of the house. That whole house was built specifically for a reason, every part of it. And, and to see that, and that goes to show you what a custom build really gets you. Yeah. You don't, you know, in so many houses that you see now, there is some kind of wasted space because the, you know, the builder just had that left over or whatever, and, and it doesn't make sense. But in this, this house in particular, every single square foot, in my opinion, was laid out well. Yeah, definitely. And that was, all, and the fireplace was tremendous when you walk in. I mean, that was a high dollar a fireplace. Cool statement piece when you walk in the front door. Oh, it's a it's a statement, which yeah. is welcome to welcome to the uh, HMFIC's house. <laughs> so yeah, so that was a lot of fun. But to get on to this episode, and uh, we're gonna have lots of that that to come. We've got some great interviews lined up, and. Uh, We've got another good interview coming up this Wednesday, or excuse me, this Thursday with Mr. Larry Hoff, and that's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to actually be on our freestyle show, so we're going to loosen up a little bit. We're going to cover some hot topics and some stuff that is important to the, you know, the 18th Congressional District and things like that, but we're going to have Larry in for the freestyle part where we kind of loosen up, talk about fun stuff, and maybe get away from the politics a little bit. Maybe have some food. Yes, I do believe we are going to have some ribs, and uh, who knows what else may come along with that. But yeah, we've got we've got ribs on the menu, so hopefully Steve, uh, who will accompany him, and Larry will be hungry and enjoy that kind of stuff. So, yep. well, the the good thing that happened to me, I, I'm going to mention, is that I made a little career change today, and that is I joined a Realty One Group. And so I'm very excited about that. Ramona and the group out there is uh, excited to have me, and I'm excited to be there. So I will be in the office tomorrow, and that's going to be pretty darn exciting. So uh, the first good news, or the new good news story of the day, is that a man who raised thirty thousand dollars for a cat shelter after the uh, photos of him taking a nap with cats has gone viral. This is a man after your own heart. Yeah, hanging right. out with cats. You right? Could, you could see me. I'd just be one gigantic. <laughs> ball of uh, what do you histamine <laughs> yeah so this was in green bay wisconsin it's a 75 uh, year old guy that just volunteered in an animal shelter it was actually a, it's the cat shelter i believe um just to go you know hang out with the cats and give them attention and stuff like yeah, that because cats need attention yeah you know it <laughs> um and so uh one day he just i don't know if he was tired or what i don't know how it happened but he just kind of laid down on a couch there and fell asleep took a nap and some cats jumped on him and just took a nap with him and so somebody snapped a photo of him taking a cat nap oh, with yes. the cats yeah. nice. and mm-hmm. uh put that online and the, the photo went viral and they uh the donations started pouring into this animal show this cat shelter in wisconsin and in like the i don't know like the week and a half or two weeks of it since the photo came out they've had thirty thousand dollars in donations that is incredible that i okay i'm all for pets i love my dog i'm not a big cat fan but come on folks there are humans out there yeah. i'm not meaning to discredit the good news yeah. i'm really not but 30 grand for cats ah, and they just keep getting more of them <laughs> if we could figure out a way, I, although i i think that we're going to start changing our marketing to just just animal photos yeah. and, and videos because that seems to be what garners the most oh, attention. Big time. It's pretty incredible. If you take, you know, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that I could take some photos or a video with Bronx, my dog, and it, we'd go viral in a heartbeat. There you and go. trying to constantly be involved in the show. He's, he's <laughs> just a show hog. So we're going to get into the hot sheet right now. And this one, this hot sheet's going to be, uh, it is going to be hot, kind of like last Thursday. But uh, right now, uh, Democratic congressman, his uh, abuse allegations have flown under the radar because of Mr. Kavanaugh's um, confirmation hearings. But Keith Ellison, he's well, he's doing a lot of backtracking and can't answer the questions that are being asked of him. Yeah, right? and and like you said, he is kind of, I believe, taking advantage of the fact that Kavanaugh is stealing the spotlight with the issues that are going on there, and he's kind of flying under the radar, uh, even though uh, it appears on the surface that there is more substantiation to his accusers claim versus Kavanaugh's accusers claim. She has a doctor's report that she's produced where she's discussed being abused with the doctor. 
Um, uh, and, and just to take this back, this is Keith Ellison, a Democrat congressman from Minnesota. And also important of note is he is the vice chair of the DNC. So he's the number two guy in the Democrat party um, in, in their national committee. Um, and of course he's denied everything, but like I said, there's at least some substantiating evidence uh, versus her just saying something. She's got a doctor's you know, a, a visit summary basically. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens to this. They're, it's really hard to find details on it. I think they're doing a pretty good job of sitting on it oh, and, yeah. and letting the Kavanaugh thing run. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see where this goes because, you know, if, if the left wants to say, you know, we need to believe all women, well, we need to believe all women then and let's, let's believe her and take down Ellison while we're at it. So uh, yeah. you, can't, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You know, you got you to gotta play play it straight absolutely and and he is you know from reading the information that's out there on it when he's been pressed on it he does kind of uh, 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 yeah. uh, stuttering on it and you know it does need to be mentioned that yes he was mentioned in the doctor's report but she can mention that in any in any face or form and it will be included in that true so it, yep. it was you know that is something to to take into account but not to discredit her at all because it sounds like there's actually a second type of allegation out there regarding him as well I believe yeah there was something else I can't remember it was it exactly. was something that when when they were when they were pressing him in the in whatever the hearing or whatever he's been called in front of because he tried to say there were no other allegations and, and there were they came back with there were two substantiated claims against them and so you know where there's smoke there's fire right. and so you got to dig into it and you got to find out and this has only been a few years ago this isn't something that happened a long yeah, time ago the the doctor's note that she produced uh was date stamped november of last year so yeah. just inside of a year when that doctor's note was uh, and their produced. relationship was only you know over a couple of years ago right. i believe so right. it's something that's fairly fresh we're not dealing with 20 30 40 years ago we're dealing with you know 10 12 14 months ago yep. so It'll be interesting to see what comes of this, and hopefully, you know, again, we want everyone held accountable, and if there is a claim, it needs to be investigated, and we just don't want to see them playing favorites with right. anyone and saying, well, because if the media is more left-leaning, we're going to leave this guy be, and we're going to come after the people that we don't like, and again, it's politicizing something that should absolutely not be politicized whatsoever. Right. These are serious claims, whether it's with Kavanaugh or Ellison, and they need to be taken at face value and not used for political gain or maneuver. But we we get what we get, and we we will throw a fit though. Yeah, you know, to kind of twist the old adage there. So, well, Comcast they uh, they ponied up, and everyone that has is Comcast and Xfinity and all that kind of stuff. You can be happy to know that. They have purchased the pay subscription TV service in, in Britain called Sky TV for a how much cool? $39 billion. That's a B yep. a billion. And uh, they were in a bidding war with Fox. The two of them were going back and forth. They exchanged multiple, well, I mean, they uh, submitted multiple offers and it just kept ratcheting up. And finally, Fox bowed out and uh, Comcast took it for $39 billion. Um, and this is a paid subscription service in Europe. They said it's it's kind of like Netflix and Amazon in the sense that they do the, they produce some of their own content, so they've got their own movies and TV shows that they do for themselves. But they also do pay per view sports and stuff like that too. So it's it's kind of a basically a subscription based service. Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. It, it sounds like it was a giant pissing match, is what it sounds yeah. like because. Fox already owned thirty nine percent of Sky, yeah, and so Comcast, in my you know estimation, this is just a giant needle into them to say, okay, we we yep. got this because they actually out were outbid by Disney. That's right for a bunch of Fox assets. So that's something that you know all these guys and their private jets and their money and and they've got egos as big as you know the seven forty sevens that they ride around in. So, but w it'll be interesting to see with all this. Um, all of these huge media companies and conglomerates they're they continue to eat each other up yep and we're going to end up with probably you know four services by the end by the time this is all done with you know fox netflix is is their own behemoth and with them producing and i can see them getting into pay-per-view sports 
very soon. It's only kind of a natural progression for something I can see. And there was whispers on a side tangent here. There was whispers, I don't know, a year or so ago of uh, Apple wanting to take out, take, I mean, buy Netflix. Mm -hmm. And that kind of f faded away. But Apple sits on a ton of free cash, so they could do it if they wanted to. So it'll be interesting to see if they start ramping up those kind of talks again. And the fact that Google could have purchased Netflix for, I believe, a million dollars at the very beginning They've got to be just, Larry and Sergey have just, one of the few things they screwed up on yeah. is, is not purchasing Netflix. Although I, I can't see or I can't say that without Reed Hastings in control of Netflix that they would have become with Google the same thing that they have become on their own. Right, because right. they would have become a, a part of a machine rather than needing to take on that market all by themselves. Very and, true. Yeah. And and because of competition from the big boys, it makes them work that much harder. And they have become this, you know, what do they eat? 25% of all bandwidth on the internet, yeah, I believe. It's major. Yeah. yeah, it's huge. And so, you know, I, I just can't see that they wouldn't have become one of the 8,000 different Google based or Alphabet Inc based companies out there. I, uh, and Netflix is amazing service. And they're, yeah. that's the other thing is when are Hulu, and Netflix and these guys are going to start to eat each other. Yeah, exactly. That, and that's, that's bound to happen. Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. they can't sustain the amount yeah. of money that they're spending on original programming. I mean, we're watching, and they're what I like is that they're buying these other shows from across the sea, across you know the Atlantic or whatever. Yeah. We've been getting into that Peaky Blinders. Have you ever seen that? No. It's a really cool show that is. Uh, it's from Britain. And it stars a guy named Cillian Murphy, who is in the uh, Batman movies, in the uh, Christopher Nolan. Oh, okay. He starred as a scarecrow. Yeah, I don't. Have you ever seen those? Are you a big Batman guy or not? Yeah. Right. But yeah, no, I know what you're talking about that. But yeah. yeah, I'm not. Yeah. But this show is incredible. It's set in 1919 to basically post World War One, and but that kind of thing that we'd never be subjected to if it wasn't for Netflix. Right. And. Just again on a little side tangent, I didn't know this, but in Great Britain, I was reading about the show and how the Great Britain film industry works. They have broken it up and they've made it a, a government entity, but they use government basically money to invest in the film business. And they have it broken up into, I believe, nine different sections in Britain to help uh, create shows and things like that in order to prop up the economy in those areas. So. Huh whether that's good that government money is being used for that and I don't know what the ROI on something like right. that is but anyway I thought that was just a for what it's worth well number three here in the hot sheet cocaine is a hell of a fruit in the uh, in the old terms of uh, Rick James I think he said a hell of a drug but yeah we had we had cocaine in balloons last week yeah. and now we got cocaine in bananas this week yeah a lot of cocaine yeah not just a little bit so this this is like a pallet full of boxes containing bananas that were donated by some agency in Texas. Um, yeah, so I, that's what I love is it was donated by from Freeport, Texas. Uh, yeah, right. Where it came so out. then now they've got to go backtrack and figure out exactly where the cocaine got dumped in these cases of bananas. But long story short, uh, this a shipment of bananas was sent to a prison and upon arrival there they inspected it like you would expect anything going into a prison. And they found eighteen million dollars worth of cocaine inside these boxes of bananas. The uh, I think the the agent that found it said there was some kind of monkey business. Oh, oh wow! We got a dad joke. Yeah. Here we go. No, but the, that's how they did find it. Was one of the agents in the DEA or whomever it is that inspects these things. It, he just thought the weight was off on uh -huh. it, and they said it was all because of his training and things like that. Well, BS, you don't <laughs> go through banana weight training when you're going to DEA. But some, you know, they'll they'll never stop inventing ways to no. smuggle drugs. They were talking about marijuana in, uh, or yeah, it was marijuana in. What was it last year? We had some something other, you know, like eggs or. Easter okay. bunnies or something like that. I don't remember what it was, but it was something goofy like that. These guys are absolutely ingenious. Oh, yeah. And, you know, this, to find that amount of cocaine, the time that it would take, that's what I always find interesting is the time that these guys take to, to ship this stuff. Yeah. Who is doing that? How much are they losing because the people that are packing it 
you know, you get a banana, you know, you can stuff that somewhere and haul it out, and that's probably a couple grand worth of uh, yeah. Coke. So, well, right now the uh, the price gap between new and used cars, number four here in the hot sheet, has never been higher than this. Yeah, and this there, the article said it was a ten year high. I didn't, I didn't oh, go, 10 year? yeah, oh, ten gosh, year. Um, yeah. I didn't. My no, it's okay. I didn't uh, go back how much further than that, but it did note it was a, it was at a ten year high. And that is the difference between the average price of a new car and the average price of a used car. And obviously that gap is being so big makes it more uh, tempting to go for a used car Absolutely. because of that kind of a, a big difference there. Anyway, so the way the auto manufacturers are now having to combat this is they're having to throw on more incentives to their, uh, to their new cars. So um, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I don't know, because it's kind of... Other than just the the intrigue of buying a new car, I mean anybody who's you know decently money savvy knows that buying a new car is is not really the way to go because you lose money driving right off the lot basically. So exactly, and the amount of money that you that you lose when you do that, as I turn off all my dinging devices <laughs> here, sorry about that, folks. Uh, you know it, it is pretty incredible. In fact, I was just talking to. Um, who the heck was I talking to the other day about that? About how when you when you do you pull it off the lot and you and these cars are so expensive. I, yeah, I was I was talking to Thad about you buy a seventy five thousand dollar truck, which if you're gonna buy a new Chevy or a, actually let's use a GMC Denali with a with a Duramax in it and all of that, it's easy to hit seventy five oh, yeah. seventy five grand on an eight seven eight year loan and when you drive it off the lot it's worth 65 yeah whereas if you went and bought a new toyota for 30 or thirty-five thousand, those actually retain their value incredibly well so it just doesn't make that much sense save for if you had a company buying you a right, car yeah. or something like that i've never been i've never owned a new car i've never bought a new car i enjoy going through the process and the cars that i have purchased but I just and someday I do want to buy a new car because I want I mean you've bought new cars yeah yeah it, it's kind of an exhilarating experience I would imagine yeah it's kind of cool to have the uh, you know be the first one to drive the car and the new car smell all that kind of stuff but but full disclosure obviously it's not the smartest investment so no I, I but would, yeah. you know if you can't go into a car believing that it's going to be an investment yeah. well, it's a means yeah. to an end yeah and in the you know like you when you bought yours you did an incredible like everything else you do <laughs> amount of research to purchase that yeah. and you got a tremendous deal on it these guys that go in and they money doesn't really mean anything or if they're going to lease or something like that they just go in buy it and, and they take the hit regardless whether it's a tax incentive or something like that but you know, i hope someday to be able to do that or or to be you know want to do that but as it stands right now i've just never wanted to take that hit so yeah. anyway number five here this this is the craziest story besides a whole bunch of coke being found in bananas <laughs> a bus driver actually let three kids drive their bus at the end of their bus route and the kids were what 11 13 and 17 yeah, I that's believe. right what yep. the hell were they thinking this is in valparaiso indiana and yeah valpo yep and three kids like you said ages 11 13 and 17 uh, out in a, their somewhat defense of it was out. She let him drive out in a rural area, um, but still, still, yeah, exactly. Come on. Uh, so she was obviously fired for that, and now she has been arrested and, and been charged with felony child neglect. Wow. And how many other kids were on the bus? They, you know? they didn't say number, but they said there were other kids on the bus, but they didn't give a total number. I would be so livid. Maybe the seventeen-year-old, not that. So if you live out in, you know, in the boondocks, yeah. maybe this kind of stuff happens where your kid <laughs> at 12 years old driving a combine and the right. old work truck. But a school bus full of kids, were, I don't care if there's only one other kid on there. You're putting my kid at risk, right. especially with an 11-year-old. 11 11-year-old, year yeah. I, that just doesn't make sense. I mean, was she getting some of that, that bananas from Texas? Probably so, Texas? yep. I, yeah. I just I can't see that that makes any sense to anyone and why they would where does that I mean we ask ourselves this question every day I'm sure why yeah <laughs> why what is the motive behind this exactly where in your mind does this make sense yeah. it, it really doesn't so well, we don't have a flashback no no it didn't have anything to hit on no nope, nothing to hit on today but 
That's probably because we're saving up for the trifecta here. Actually, let's drop in a promo for a PMP. Sure. So right now at 24.53, we're gonna drop in a promo for the lovely ladies of the Platinum Moms podcast. And we are back. I just lost the Facebook feed because I keep pressing buttons with the hand I don't have. <laughs> For those watching or not watching, I you may not know I only have seven fingers, and they never you never know what they're gonna do. So <laughs> the first one here in the trifecta is the biggest one, and we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, and that's the, the Brett Kavanaugh's accuser is uh, agreed to testify. Yeah, so we had talked about this previously uh, that there was kind of off and on agreements, and so they uh, she finally did agree to testify. They wanted her there today, the today being Monday. She said she couldn't make it till Thursday, and the story then came out. The reason she couldn't make it till Thursday is because she was driving from California to D.C. because she refused to fly because she's claustrophobic. Was um, she on the Madden Cruiser? I'm uh, not yeah. making a joke out yeah, of it. But, the Greyhound bus. Okay, so, um, so, and then there was, now the conspiracy theories start rolling because now a new wrinkle has been added that another accuser came forward and accused him of exposing himself to her and while they uh, were in Yale. So this would be a couple years after this other incident. Um, and basically the same kind of thing. There's no corroborating evidence. The one person that was supposed to corroborate this new story uh, gave a statement and they shot holes in that and it had held no weight. Um, so right. basically there's no corroboration on this one either. So the conspiracy theory, if you buy into that kind of thing, is... The reason that she they delayed it having her testify to Thursday is to, is to allow this story to drop in there before she started testifying. So now they've got two things to hammer him with, um, and so again, I mean the, we'll we'll see come Thursday what happens. Uh, Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader, has already called already said that they're going to do an up or down vote uh, and roll with it after the testimony on Thursday. Uh, because there's unless something comes up on Thursday, there ha there is no corroborating evidence, no witness claims. The couple witnesses that have claimed uh, uh, to know something about it, they've kind of caved under under interviewing, and, and they can't back their own statements up. Um, one thing uh, that is interesting to note with this new accusation, I read last night that uh, this new lady grabbed or had a friend try to back up her statement and this this friend i guess is a pretty prominent person in local circles back there uh in dc in well i think yeah or in the new england area some oh, okay. but yeah east coast somewhere um a, a pretty prominent person uh, a big time democrat donor and activist a pretty far lefty who cannot stand trump and she came out and said I have no idea what this lady's talking about. Really? See, so, I haven't heard anything. So about she had this. she had a perfect shot to take a swipe at Trump, but she she was straight up. So that's kind of what leads me or leads people to believe that are reading about this that this news story is a little hokey too. Because here they had this sweet spot, you know, lined up with this lady coming in who hates Trump and all this kind of stuff, and she could have easily just you know made up whatever story. But she took the high road and said, no, I don't know what this lady's talking about. I wasn't there. Um, yeah. Well, and, and probably seeing the amount of coverage that this is getting, the perjury starts to sting a little bit. Yeah. The thought of perjury, yeah. I should say. And so, you know, that, that kind of thing. And I think Kavanaugh had something new come out today, kind of backing up his statements even more. And I forgot what it was. I should have well, written he, a note he, down. he released, he, uh, evidently he's like a hoarder or something. He... <laughs> he <laughs> he released a, a, ca a calendar from 1982 yeah, oh, was, was his personal calendar, which obviously in a court of law that wouldn't hold up because no. it's not like you're going to record your every last detail on your calendar. But still, I mean, it's something to throw out there. Um, so that was the new thing. Uh, the the uh, important thing I want to note, because I hear a lot, even up and through today, it's still going on. A lot of Democrat senators, a lot of pundits on the left like to talk about... Um, <laughs> Will's having mic difficulties here, sorry. Uh, like to talk about, or like to say, you know, they're demanding the FBI investigate him. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about it before. This is not a Thursday. federal matter. Yeah. This is, this two things, I mean, multiple things, but this was 36 years ago. This was a local matter. Um, and the fe the federal authorities have nothing to do with this. It, was, it wasn't a federal crime. It didn't cross state lines. There was nothing federal about it. And But the argument now that I hear constantly uh, the new talking point that they're pushing, which 
still doesn't hold weight, is that, well, the FBI investigated Clarence Thomas and, and the Anita Hill and the Anita Hill case in 1991. The problem there is the apples and oranges don't add up is that the reason the FBI investigated Clarence Thomas is because he was a federal judge at the wow. time of the accusation when Anita Hill said this stuff went down Thomas was a federal judge and sh and the activities that she alleged happened took place in his office which was a federal building so therefore the FBI has jurisdiction because he was a federal employee and this supposedly went down in a federal building and that's an important thing to remember because a lot of people don't know that right they don't understand that because they're not going to hear that from exactly the, the majority of, of the stories that have been printed and things like that because of the taint that has been given to them right. and you know, I, I hate to give Trump any credence with his fake news and all that kind of stuff. But again, sometimes these things do feel like a witch hunt, not to discredit her or, or him. Because unless there was an investigation done back then, and I know that when we get into sexual assault and things like this, it's difficult. A lot of them do not get reported when they occur, especially at that age because of especially back then with the the way that women were treated and things like right. that but he's gone through six different investigations into his background sometime you would think that this would have popped up right exactly. I'm, and i'm just this is a fact this isn't me giving an, an opinion on it. this is just facts of the whole case why does it come up now why didn't it come up when he was a dc circuit court judge right I just don't understand that. I understand that he's making decisions at the highest court in the land, but being a D.C. Circuit, circuit Court judge is no laughing Pretty matter either. Yep. It's a huge deal. So I, I just want to see everything treated fairly, and when when these things pop up like this, it does give you a little bit of a, a kind of a, well, why now? Why, why are we doing, what is the, again, going back to what I was talking about earlier, what with the bus thing what was the motive to doing it now why weren't these other six investigations and his prominence big enough then to bring this up because right. it's not a laughing matter she should have brought it up then regardless of how important he was it, it just i want to see that i want to see it all treated the same not just because he's going to be on the supreme court possibly right and and knowing what we know and and in regards to all the points you brought up, this re more and more starts to smack of, of an, of a, uh, not a setup per se, but I mean a calculated maneuver basically is what it comes down to. So like I said, it's going to be interesting to see what uh, unfolds on Thursday. Um, we may uh, touch on that briefly when Larry's on the show, if we get some info in before we go on air with Larry, but uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what comes of this. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, in the end, we just want to see it come to a conclusion so we don't continue to drag both of them out that's right. the other thing they're both getting drugged through the mud from both sides and we don't want to see that either so this story the next one here in the trifecta is one that actually kind of surprised me and that's yeah. that nike's market value has increased not exponentially but quite a bit since adding colin kaepernick and this is another touchy subject that you know we we're not afraid to get into yeah but it needs to be discussed yeah so uh this is dates back to labor day is when nike made the announcement that they had signed on kaepernick to an endorsement deal to do some commercials and some endorsements for them uh and uh, of course right away uh one faction comes out and calls for a boycott and and it did work temporarily mm -hmm. is that they took a big dive in the market that following day a dip on the open they they lost oh, an yeah, appreciable like amount percent or yeah not 10 percent um however since then overall since labor day to now the stock is up five percent uh which equates to six billion dollars in market value so uh, it, it, in the long run, after that first initial couple days of dip, it recovered and then some, and it's now a net positive since the announcement about Kaepernick came out. So it is interesting. You, it makes you wonder: is is that bump due to the Kaepernick sympathizers wanting to infuse the cash? Maybe some of the organizations that back him. Uh, not that you would donate money to Nike, but I mean purchase more of the products or do something to pump up their. Uh, that be Reebok bump, not yeah. they, like that. Tie in there. Hey, um, no, it, it's interesting to uh, to 
I would be interested to find out where this influx of cash came from, the, the, the increase in market value. Uh, why did it turn and go up now all of a sudden? Because obviously, like you said, this is a very polarizing issue. Um, and let's say you call it 50-50, half the country doesn't like this and half the country does. So in order for it to go up 5%, that half of the country that does support it has really got to be getting behind Nike and, and driving driving their market cap. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah, and my big thing is that all of these things, whenever we talk about the you know stock going up incredibly fast, and, we're, and this is only since Labor Day, so we're three weeks from today, mm -hmm. three weeks ago yep. today. This, we're not seeing any quarterly numbers. We're not seeing anything like that. In my opinion, it's speculation. Yeah. Because, you know, the the folks that are looking, the analysts and whatnot that are looking at, at Nike as a company believe that they are always focused on the youth and they think that the youth of America sees and believes what they see on TV as the God's honest truth, which, you know, yeah. like the ad said, it was on the internet, so it's got to be true. <laughs> Well, that's BS. There's no, there's no actual tangible numbers to back this up. So why, why are they going up five percent when we haven't seen anything to back up and true, and yeah, true sales credit. numbers. You're right, yeah. And that's what you know. That's why I say it's speculation on the part of, of these, you know, whether it's a investment firms or whatever it may be. They don't have anything to go on. They can't see in three weeks how many more pairs of Air Maxes have been purchased. I know we saw all the crap on social media, people burning their <laughs> Nikes and all that bullshit, which is stupid because you already gave Nike your yeah, money. Exactly. Vote nothing. with your wallet for real and don't go buy their products if that's what you don't want to do. But to go buy something that you've already given their money, they're, all they're saying is keep burning because more than likely at some point, People may not know that they own some ancillary shoe company, and you go buy that one, whether yeah. it's Puma or, and I don't know all the different ones that they own, but you're more likely to go buy another pair of shoes. So if that's the case, and they think that you know these types of things really have an effect, are they are they bidding up Reebok and and Adidas and things like that? Right. Which I think Nike does own Adidas, if I remember correctly, something like that. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. get yeah. it all mixed up, yeah. but. So there, if there's no real numbers, and this is all just air, kind of like the the uh, big bubble bust in the 2000s, not bubble butts, Wes. No, the, it, this is all just air, like yeah, Nike yeah, Air. See, exactly. I see what you did there. Yeah, all right, exactly. go ahead. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> like, yeah, if I could take credit for that in my brain, I would, but I, I had, there was no tie into that. But <laughs> no, it just without I wouldn't go buy Nike stock based on that so why are they bidding up there's no right. there's no evidence that this is going to have an impact on their earnings quarter over quarter at all yeah. so it is what it is which is error and <laughs> we're probably going to see some of these shorts you know sell off and they're going to take their money and run yep. it's going to crash at some point because yeah. if there's no real market based uh, evidence that it should go up it's going to go down. Yeah. So number three in the trifecta here is that uh, President Trump is considering an executive order to investigate antitrust on all these social media platforms, Google, and all this kind of stuff. And this is, uh, it's going to be interesting because this, you want to talk about a witch hunt, this is him on a witch hunt, yeah. in my opinion. And it, it is interesting. We've talked about this a little bit before that, you know, Google and Facebook, they're all they're all companies you use by choice. You're not forced to use them, so if you don't like it, you can go elsewhere. And this also includes Twitter. I failed to mention them. Um, but the the way that they're going about saying that it warrants an antitrust investigation is they, they claim that Google, Facebook, Twitter, et al., these other kinds of social medias, um, they are citing their, their critical role in today's society, saying that they're such a big part of today's society, so ingrained in society, that it harms consumers because you basically everybody is using this stuff you can't really avoid it therefore you're not getting a fair shake when you do use it so it's harming the end user so I can see it's kind of wishy-washy I can see that but it's still I go back to the whole free market thing is that you don't have to use it so I don't know and the big thing that I, I would say to that is that if he had or the government had an understanding of how these algorithms work and what is being picked 
and chosen for you to see on these feeds, we have to pay for our placement of posts and things like that, whether it be YouTube, Google, Facebook, whatever it is. If I showed you the difference between our paid reach, and this is with KCP, paid reach and organic reach, the paid reach goes way higher because you're bumping other stuff out of the algorithm right. in order for people to see what you have done. So the argument is that, that he says is that conservative leaning values and posts and things like that are being somehow filtered out. Here's the issue. How do we know that unless we could see the algorithm, which is, is he going to get them to yeah. <laughs> show yeah, that right. to us? Yeah. I don't believe that's going to happen. Right. So I, I just can't believe that, yeah, there may be some kind of conspiracy because they have kind of proven that there are some issues in the way that information is disseminated to people. But I, I can't believe that with all of the millions and millions of posts that are going up on all these platforms by the minute, that all of them are being seen by people that are not being seen by the people that you want. You can't choose who chooses to see your post about uh, banana sales, not having anything to do with <laughs> cocaine. You can't, and, and that's completely made up, but you don't get to choose that. The algorithm is choosing that for you. You can, you know, it could be something based on keywords, but you know what? In the way that we write and how bad our English is now, how do we know that that algorithm knows what the hell we're talking about? Right. The way that kids are talking these days, and again, I'm the get off my lawn guy, <laughs> but the English and the spelling and the grammar is so horrible that you're betting that that algorithm knows and is keeping up with the different usages of words and misspellings and the basically the the abbreviation of words yeah. now to get that point across i'm i'm sorry it's a tall order yeah it is I, I just can't see that it's something that really is going to make that big of an impact on the people that if the if it's if it's targeted at the youth of, of today which is what everyone says the user base is between 21 and 39 that's the core demographic of everyone that is on all of these social platforms. Maybe if you're on Insta or something like that, you're down to 15, maybe 14. But the bastardization of the English language has made it so I can't believe that the algorithm can keep up with that and filter out only conservative-leaning thoughts. Because conservatives and liberals are both illiterate right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. I. I so I, I just think that again it's the it's the chemtrail crowd it's the you know the government's watching me and all that I, we have just not got the power to make all of that happen and i surely don't believe that these companies that are solely focused on now earnings okay they're based on earnings which is to get paid for promotion so if that's what it is but all, you're not paying to put a post up on Facebook, and I'm not paying on our personal account to right. put a post up. So, and, and you and I have a relatively decent handle on the English language. So if we look at it at that level, at the, at the ultimate level of how we're even speaking on these platforms, I just really, I find it hard to believe. Yeah. And maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe these guys are so smart and they're changing <laughs> the algorithm by the minute. I, I just don't see it. So again, we'll, we'll see what happens with it, but I, I just don't believe that there's gonna be any water. And again, you, at the beginning of this, of this story, you said it exactly, it's free will. Yeah. If we don't like what we see, get the hell off. Yeah. You don't have to post on Facebook, you don't have to post on Twitter or anything like that. And if you don't like what you see on them, the posts that you're seeing, guess what? You don't have to do that either. You can just surf around on the interwebs for cat photos and give somebody <laughs> 25 grand that's to right. see more of them. So anyway, that's, uh, I don't know, I kind of went off on that one. But I, I just, again, it, it, look at it for what it is rather than using it as a political motive or a political move to make yourself look good to the lowest common denominator of your, your base that supports you. Yep. So, sorry. That's all right. Speaking of the air that Nike's got, I just had there to take some in because I exhaled so much. So, 
Well, uh, it's about time for the old crunch time. We're running a little quick today, but yeah. we can go a little bit longer. You got a crunch time? I got I got a crunch time A and B. They're, they're kind of tie-ins. Both of them. I yeah. like that. So the first one, they're both NFL related. Uh, nice. The first one is uh, the new to the season, the new uh, hit rules, the you know the the new unnecessary oh roughness. Oh my gosh! Let's that's yeah, let's talk its about ugly this. Head. Clay Matthews. Yes. I feel so sorry yeah. for that guy. It's now pure textbook form tackles are now getting flagged big time. And th- the huge story is I forget the guy's name. He's a D tackle for the Dolphins. Did you read about that? I can't remember who, who the Dolphins are playing. It was a quarterback, obviously the quarterback in their team because he's, he's a D tackle, was, I think, being wrapped up by somebody and start. So normally you would basically gang tackle the guy and bring him down, but he was so afraid of being flagged as being the second man on the scene if he if he are, if he takes a shot at a guy that's already wrapped up, he was afraid of getting flagged. So what does he do? He goes like out of his way to do some basically jump over the guy as he's falling down as opposed to like you know wrapping him up and going down with him he goes out of his way to to hurdle the guy basically to, mm-hmm. to not get a flag that he lands funny and he tears his acl and he's done for the year yeah hey so williams hayes yeah so because he's going out of his way to avoid a penalty which was never a penalty before but he's so hung up on that mm-hmm. that he goes out of his way he tears his knee up and is done for the year. It's exactly. just ridiculous. And and these guys, you know, talk about bastardization of something. The the defense has been totally handcuffed, and they've made it so that. And these guys are some of the highest paid players on the team. I mean, look at what um, what's his name uh, for uh, the Chicago Bears? Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack just signed for. I mean, he that's quarterback money. Yep. So we we want to take this is going to affect their ability to make money because they're not going to get the sacks the tackles the tackles for losses all of those things that they get paid for yeah and if that's kind of stuff performance incentives that are mm-hmm. built into the contracts you're not going to reach it and on top of that if they do make these sacks and get flagged for it they're going to pay a fine exactly so and they and the fines get bigger yep. each time that they get they get penalized right. for it. so these guys are going to see a pay hit and so that's going to have an economic impact on somebody's family. And because they make so many, these guys are all individual corporations. It's going to have an impact on a community in some way, shape, or form because they give money back to the Boys and Girls Club, to schools, all of those things. If you're taking money out of their pocket, they're not going to pass that along. And I'm not talking about trickle-down economics. I'm just talking about the good that these guys are trying to do. And on top of that... If you're going to do, they're going to get hurt on top of it. Well, in the NFL, you're all based on, you, yes, you get a signing bonus, but if you don't play, you don't get paid. Right. So your Hayes is that what the third game of the season. Yep. So now he's got 13 games. He's not going to get paid for. Again, a tremendous economic impact on him and his family and his community, because they have made the quarterback the golden child. Right. And you can't touch them, and they're and they're now the Stay Puff Marshmallow, Marshmallow Man. But now the quarterbacks know it, and they're and they're eating it up. They're they're becoming actors even more than they already were. It's like taking a charge in basketball, the flop. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's what it's going to turn into. They and and it's stupid. It, and the problem is, is that we're we're putting the referees in this spotlight. Oh yeah, they they're never a, they're in a horrible position. They I, don't I would want hate to, do to be this. a ref. Yeah. And you've got to you've got to think that they're going to go back and change these rules for one simple reason: that the owners are going to get so pissed off that their teams are their wins and losses are being affected by a flag that is absolutely unnecessary. Right. And why the and and it's so it's so subjective what the you know this whole rule of how you land with your weight on a quarterback going back to last week with with Matthews. That was Matthews, yes. Yep. And how he sacked the quarterback. They said he landed with too much weight. Yeah. How the hell are exactly. you supposed to know that? I think the, that? the rule says you cannot land with the majority yeah, of your so weight. So 51% it, of yeah, your weight. How exactly. are we supposed to know that? That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. That's just so ridiculous. I can't believe that they get away with this and they actually allowed those those referees to be put in this situation but why did the owners agree to right. it 
I just can't see where it makes sense in, in any part of this game that has been played. Yeah, we need to make hits correct. We need to protect, pr protect the longevity of all the players, whether it's CTE, blown ACLs. I don't care what it is. Yes, we need to take care of them, but you can't take away their ability to do a perfectly legal hit. Yeah. And a form tackle. Absolutely. I, I just, I can't see why they do this, and I, I just hope for all the good that they go back at, when they go to the, the NFL competition committee or what it is, and they can change this. It's going to be like the catch rule all over because there was so much controversy and so much garbage with the catch rule that they kind of finessed it and tweaked it a little bit this offseason. Now they've got this new rule in there that just muddies the water all over again, just like the catch rule was all screwed up. So, like you said, they're going to have to revisit it again this offseason with this the hit this hitting rule because it's just – it's it's not football anymore. If you nope. can't if you can't wrap a guy up and take him down to the ground and drive him into the ground like you've been taught since you were in pee wee football, yeah, to do then, it correctly. Yeah, yeah. To take that out of there and to not spearing him with your helmet, but just a form tackle, wrapping him up with your shoulder pad right in, right in the solar plexus. Yeah, exactly. And there's nothing wrong with that. And it's not like this is Dick Buckus or or any of those old guys. Which, I mean, that needed to be cleaned up. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah. But. Again, it, you know, we'll quit railing on this so much, but I just can't believe. And the funny thing about the catch rule that you mentioned is, they basically admitted that that was a complete joke. Yeah. That you know, I think it was Jordy Nelson, Des Bryant, those guys were really impacted, and and they were taken out of the Super Bowl, I believe. One of them, I can't remember who it was. Yeah, but that's, I can't. Uh, one of those catches impacted the team who went to the Super Bowl. Talk about the economic impact on that. So. Yeah. Anyway, what, what's oh, your yeah, my, my part? Yeah, what's my your part, part two, two is is uh, is my my favorite, the Seahawks. Just, <laughs> the chickens. It's just driving me up the wall. I mean, I guess this this goes back to Paul Allen and and his mentality of how what kind of a face you want on the franchise, like kind of like how he ran the Blazers, where the jail Blazers. the jail Blazers era, where he didn't care. He just filled the team with thugs. But the the thing that I mean, what kind of example does it set? But the the two things that I'm talking about in particular. Kendricks. Is Ken, the signing of Kendricks, who has pled guilty to a federal crime. Now, whether or not you you think the crime is ticky tack, the, the, the yes, bottom I line, do. yeah, the bottom line, it's a federal crime that he pled guilty to. He said, "Yeah, I did it. I'm a I'm a federal felon who's going to be sentenced next January." But uh, who cares about that? We'll go ahead and sign him. So that that sends a horrible message to me. Uh, the other one that really drives me nuts is Earl Thomas, the dude. The sit in. The, yeah, well, he he skipped all the training camp. He, show, he showed up like what a couple days before the season started, uh, and he started ever since. And now this last week, he no showed practice on two days, and the Seahawks issued a statement saying that they were going to significantly fine him. But what do they do? They start him, and he plays the whole game. Yep. What message does that send? You you can stay home from practice all week. What what does that tell the rest of your team? The guys that aren't making as much money as Thomas, the guys that are busting their butt trying to stay on the roster, here's this guy that thinks he's something better than me. He gets to stay home from practice all week, and he still starts. Okay, so I'm gonna, uh, I have a rebuttal for Kendricks. They're private corporations, and they can employ who they like. Oh, I agree. I'm just saying the, the optics. I, I understand the optics that. are bad, but yeah, yeah. I, and, and, you know, we, we actually had this discussion last week or the week before about what you know whether it's uh hardy greg hardy being employed by the by the uh cowboys yep. or uh what happened with ray rice or any of those guys i find those crimes to be tremendous whether they were you know correct or not with ray rice and his wife agreeing that it was all right now, it doesn't matter he still hit a woman and right. you need to be held accountable for that kendrick's was and this is my opinion and i know that you and i are we don't completely agree on this but it was a victimless crime. He did make a mistake, and he admitted it. But my big thing is for Paul Allen to do that. I, I think for him, I think he's kind of out of touch. And with the Jailblazers, that was more Bob Witz, Bob Witz Witsit yeah, you're than right. it was Paul Allen. Ultimately, he signs the paychecks, but he just kind of, you know, while he's out on his, you know, submarine or whatever, he's just <laughs> taking a phone call that we're going to, you know, Hire Ruben. What was the hell was Ruben? He was the Kobe stopper. Ruben uh, Patterson. Patterson. Yeah. Look at this. I hate the Blazers, and I know this. I know. Good job. I'm proud of you. But 
anyway, so, you know, it is bad optics. Um, yeah. You know, and back to Earl Thomas, I I can't stand that either. I, It is a terrible look because from what I also read some reports that he was actively at practice and sitting on the sideline, not participating, so that he would be at practice, but he was sitting on the sidelines. Like, literally Indian style, like he was ready uh, for show and tell. I think I think that's what it was. It was two practices that he did that and mm-hmm. two practices where he, like, flat no-showed. He wasn't even there. Yeah. And that so that is you know for him, I, if I was his teammate, I'd give him a big fu. And yeah. I know that those guys are all protective of each other, and they all want to see each other get paid. But if I'm a rookie struggling to get onto the field, yeah. and I see a guy not doing anything yet, he gets the start. Yeah. Talk about favoritism. Yep. I mean, Earl Thomas is or was one of, if not the best safety in the NFL. I think his production is probably decreased because of his age and right. the amount of the amount of injuries and the just the physical toll that that game takes on you you can't play at the level and the recklessness that he has played at for years and years and years at some point your effectiveness is going to decline yeah and so it's going to end up biting him in the ass though whether you know and we can go to Le'Veon Bell I know there are a lot of people that are in support of him he has the complete right to do that. And we yeah. talked about this a couple weeks ago. And maybe he, at 27 years old, has enough fuel left in the tank to justify losing $900,000 a, a game or per week. I, I just don't know that. I mean, you lose 17 or you know, $15 million, which is what the what he would assign for. Right. Where Where is that going to win for him? Again, we talk about economic impacts on a community. He just... He's lighting uh, $900,000 a, a, a week off. And, I mean, for somebody that's struggling to get by on thirty grand a year, to right. see somebody be so flippant about that kind of money because they think that they're so valuable. And I understand, in the context that is the NFL, it's a completely different animal. But still, you, it, you're not going to ingratiate yourself with your fans if the guys that are in, steel, in the steel mills in, in Pittsburgh – who wear your jerseys and pay off an arm and a leg to wear them, are they going to continue to buy those and support you because right. you are given the middle finger to a, you know nearly a million dollars a week? I just can't see that they are. No. Okay, well, it's my turn to jump on the, yeah. the crunch time. And mine is, uh, I, I probably railed on this before at some point in time, and I, I don't mean the crunch time to turn into some Will and Wes bash fest, but... Is it just me, or can no one in the greater Clark County area merge when they're driving? This is what I'm talking about. So out here on Highway 14, when you're heading eastbound just after the Camas exit, it goes from two lanes to one without, you know, any kind of, there's just, it merges into one. Yeah. It's the folks that are right next to you or maybe half a car length ahead of you, and they just, like, melt into the lane with no blinker no like oh crap there's somebody next to me like they have this right to just come on over in their geo or in their f-350 i don't care what it is but come on folks have a little decency on the road don't cause wrecks and i've had that happen that exact same spot a couple times i've got a guy like on my rear quarter panel my rear flank he's behind me like a half a car length behind me overlapping me coming down to that merge point and he sees the merge (laughs) instead of falling back behind Mm -hmm. me because he's already behind me he guns it and tries to get in front of me what is that yeah why why, where is it that and to me it almost seems like because i will like look and sitting up as high as i do in my truck i can see people their rear view mirrors and things like that it's like they they're not even aware of it happening and the same thing happens when you're on 14 westbound going just above or below just east of the slough bridge where it goes from two to one to go up that pretty dangerous bridge a little narrow bridge yeah yeah. and and where is it in their mind that they think that this is supposed to happen and i'm not going to say that it's all oregon drivers but (laughs) it sure seems to me like a lot of them are but why do they do this what why does it does it say some more like oh yeah you just naturally get to you know, push somebody over beca- and nearly cause a wreck because you just want to, or you're texting on your yeah, on yeah. your phone or whatever. I, and I'm sure yeah. Jeremy, somebody that drives as much as you do, 
you know exactly what I'm talking about or what we're talking about. Yeah. It, and you drive big trucks as well. It's got to drive you bat nuts crazy. It, and it's dangerous. The bottom line, regardless of what my opinion is, it's just dangerous. Yeah. So everyone out there, please just be aware. Just throw a blinker on. Show us what your intent is. Or fall back. And and follow the rules of the road. Because ultimately, that is against the law. Yeah. You're, if you're pushing me over and I may have to hit the median or whatever, <laughs> good. You keep honking at it, Jeremy. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, we'll... Uh, Wow, we both got a little hot on this. Yeah, a little hot on the collar. Yeah, but not me because I'm cold yeah. I'm in my, <laughs> my sweatshirt. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I bet you do. Anyway, so, well, this has been uh, Kinetic Chaos Podcast number 50. We're so excited. Yeah. We're, uh, we've hit the half century mark. We've just got hundreds and hundreds more to go with the uh, good blessings of the Lord and all you guys watching and listening. We've got bigger and better things again. Check out all the business stuff we got going now and uh, like and subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. We really appreciate your support. you have anything else? No, just definitely tune in on Thursday with, with yeah, Larry joining with, us. Larry, with Larry Hoff, Hoff will be a fun conversation, learn some more info yeah, from him. And, and I'm just excited to get him kind of, you know, and we've done a pretty good job of, of kind of, not be so serious about all the politics right. but even more with the and i hope we have some pretty good co good content with the with the free yeah i'll try can, to try to cook up some good stuff there. yeah we may speaking have of to, cooking up yeah. yes <laughs> the ribs we're gonna have some ribs on the old uh, the oklahoma joe back here that you guys probably see uh, well it's dark now it's so dark yeah, yeah it's, and it's a black barbecue but anyway with that you got anything else i got nothing okay thank you guys for listening we go Facebook, Jeremy, thank to you. you. Everyone, thanks for watching. We will see you guys on Thursday. Have a great evening.